Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a congregation that is located in the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. We are truly thankful that you have chosen to worship with us today, whether you are a member or a new friend. We hope that you will find this service to be one that will lift up your spirits and in this time of pandemic, give you hope. We do invite you to continue to worship with us, but also to visit our wsmethodist.org website, where you can learn more about ways to connect with our congregation and her many ministries. On the website, you will find information about Sunday school classes for children, youth, and adults. You will also find information about small groups and opportunities to continue to be in ministry together during this season. I also want to invite you as members of our congregation or the community at large to send us some information, if you would, about what you are missing about in-person worship. In-person worship is somewhat different than virtual worship. And I would like to have information by August the 1st or before, either an email or a text, or if you are brave and will send a video to jane at wsmethodist.org, then we would like to hear from you and use that in our August the 2nd worship service. We are very excited to be able to offer a service that will be table talk around the things we're missing at Washington Street and in in-person worship. And now if you are ready to join us in worship, I invite you to light the candle that you have prepared as we welcome the light of Christ into our lives. Hear these words from Brian Wren. How can we name a love that wakens heart and mind, indwelling all we know or think or do or seek or find? In Christ alone is love full grown and life and hope begun. Let us worship the Lord. And now let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will be reading from 
the Hebrew Scriptures, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. Lord, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even from far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord, that you don't already know completely. You surround me, front and back. You put your hand on me. That kind of knowledge is too much for me. It's so high above me that I can't reach it. Where could I go to get away from your spirit? Where could I go to get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I went down to the grave, you would be there too. If I could fly on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest only on the far side of the ocean, even there your hand would guide me. Even there your strong hand would hold me tight. If I said, the darkness will definitely hide me. The light will come, become night around me. Even then, the darkness isn't too dark for you. Nighttime would shine bright as day because darkness is the same as light to you. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart your works are wonderful. I know that very well. My bones weren't hidden from you. When I was being put together in a secret place, when I was being woven together in the deepest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my embryo, and on your scroll every day was written that was being formed for me before any one of you had yet happened. God, your plans are incomprehensible to me. Their total number is countless. If I tried to count them, they outnumber the grains of sand. If I came to the very end, I'd still be with you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
We've all played those get-to-know-you games where you're asked to write two or three things about yourself that you don't think very many people will know. If you've never played the game, you write those things on a slip of paper and you put them in a basket, and then the facilitator pulls them out one at a time, and then the crowd tries to guess who has actually written that particular trait. The last time I played this game, we were on confirmation retreat in the mountains of Maggie Valley, North Carolina. And no one was at all surprised that Spencer Stevens plays three instruments. The time I played before was when I was on the cabinet and we were having a new annual conference committee meeting for the first time that year, I believe. And one of my colleagues was very quick to answer the question. She knew right away that I was the one who really likes new age music being known. It's rather surprising what people can learn about us just by being around us on a regular basis. They hear the kind of music we play on the radio or through the internet. They know what we like to eat or what we don't like to eat. They might observe specific behaviors that you and I are not even aware of even as we're doing them. There's this look that my daughter and I share. I'm absolutely sure that she learned it from me. And it's not at all an attractive look. It is a blank look that sends a clear signal of disapproval. Yeah, I'm not real proud of that. But I've seen it in her and I've recognized it in myself. Now imagine how well those people who know you best really know you, and then think about how this psalm says that God knows you. God has known you since before you were conceived, when you were but matter in the earth. God saw you as an embryo in your mother's womb. God knows everything about you, where you go, what you do, what you think, what motivates your best decisions and your worst decisions. The psalmist teaches us that God knows what each one of us will say even before we say it. Not only does God know us, in this translation from the Common English Bible, the psalmist says, you put your hand on me implying that not only does God know him, but that God is intervening in his life, in his comings and in his goings. It is a knowledge that is beyond his comprehension. Such knowledge is behind, beyond our comprehension as well. Being known so deeply might be frightening a terrifying thing. But the psalmist cries out, examine me, God, look at my heart, put me to the test, know my anxious thoughts, look to see if there is any idolatrous way in me, and then lead me on the eternal path. Anxious thoughts. I am sure we have all come face to face with anxious thoughts lately. I'm anxious about the number of new cases of COVID-19 in South Carolina. I'm anxious about those who are sick and cannot be visited by their family and who can't have their pastor come and pray with them. I'm anxious for those who are grieving and who cannot be surrounded by their family or their friends, who cannot engage in the normal practices of grief, and who cannot have their clergy come and pray with them. 
I'm anxious to see your faces. I love being able to meet with you in your home each week through this virtual worship experience, but I really do want to see your faces. I want to be able to, to pray with you. I want to be able to reach out and hold your hand or hug you when I see you. I really do want to gather for worship in person in our church again. Don't you? Take a virtual walk with me down the hallways of our church. Don't you want to see Mary's Maiden's bulletin board and hear the happy voices of children playing in the screen above? When you see the images of our stained glass windows, don't you want to gather in that beautiful sacred space? Just like when you see the windows behind me, doesn't it make you want to come in and just sit and meditate on the beauty of this space? I really want to make a commercial like Rick Henry's commercial that's now airing on WIS TV. He's walking down Main Street, tossing a football from hand to hand, talking about how much he's looking forward to being back with his friends, and especially tailgating in the fall. The commercial ends with this tagline, wear a mask. If you won't do it for yourself, do it for football. Only I want to say, do it for church. God knows how anxious I am and how anxious you are. Even before we name our anxiety or whisper our fears aloud. Maybe there are some fears and some anxieties that we want to hide from God. Maybe something more personal than COVID-19, something that we hope no one ever sees or notices or knows. And yet, we cannot hide from God. The psalmist writes that God is an inescapable presence in our lives. God is in the heavens and even in the graves of death. God is on the far side of the oceans, and even if we wanted to hide in the dark, the darkness is as daylight to God. We cannot hide from God. Not our fears, not our anxieties, our frustrations, our worst choices or our best ones. Our most noble thoughts are those we really do not wish to acknowledge. However, God is not present to do us harm like a supreme stalker waiting to take us captive so that we can be judged and condemned. No, God wants to join us wherever we are so that even there, God can guide us. Even there, as the psalmist says, God's strong hand would hold us tight. God is present to help us, to guide us, and to secure our path and our future. Do you remember the story of Elijah the prophet? It's told in 1 Kings. He was terrified about the threats of Jezebel. And his fear was not at all misplaced. She really was out to get him. Elijah fled into the wilderness where he sat down and he told the Lord that it is enough. I just want to die now. But there in the wilderness... God sent angels with food and drink. 
And God spoke to Elijah and told him that he should eat and drink, for he had a long journey ahead of him. But Elijah did not get up and eat or drink. And then the Lord came again. And this time, he ordered the great prophet, his own great prophet, to get up and to eat and drink and to continue his journey. And Elijah ate and he drank and he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb where he took shelter and hid in a cave. But even there, he could not hide from God. There in the cave, Elijah heard a roaring wind thinking that God was coming to him. He watched and listened. He felt the earth shake under the power and force of the earthquake. But God was not in that earthquake. And then the fire came and there was heat all around him, but God was not in that fire. God came to him in a still, small voice and asked, Elijah, what are you doing here? And then the Lord listened patiently while Elijah gave him the same explanation he had given him all through that wilderness journey. And then God told his servant what to do. And Elijah stopped hiding from God. He followed God's guidance. And he returned to Damascus and to his future. Whatever wilderness of anxiety or fear you are experiencing these days, God is with you. Even if you have not felt God's hand on your back, God is reaching for you. God is coming to you to guide you and to hold you tight. Even if you are lost in the dark or if your wilderness is a wilderness of guilt, God is with you to touch you and to grant you the wholeness of grace. God knows us more intimately than we may ever choose to be known in our innermost being. We are completely vulnerable in the presence of God. Yet God came to us in the vulnerability of humanity in Jesus so that we might come to know the God who knows us beyond our own comprehension. Jesus said to his disciples, If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. In Christ we meet the God who is light for our darkness, bread for the hunger of our souls, living water for our thirsty spirits, peace for our anxiety, and strength to face our fears, and courage to be obedient. In Christ we meet the God who searches for those who are lost in the wilderness and takes them by the hand and guides them home. God is with you. God loves you. God will never leave you. Amen and Amen.
please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Holy God, we thank you for your presence with us. We are grateful that you are persistent in your pursuit of your children. We pray today for all who are praying to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For all who are anxious and fearful, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who suffer and who are experiencing trouble, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who are grieving whom we name in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy. For this congregation as she seeks to serve this community, Lord, in your mercy. For this community, Lord, in your mercy. For the world, its peoples, and its leaders, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the church universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. As Jesus prayed, may your church be united in service and in hope. Unite our voices now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hear this good news. God knows you and God loves you. As we go into the world, let us go with the knowledge that this God is with us wherever we may journey. Let us go in the confidence and the hope of children of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.